Shalom, Chavrim. I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live, and we are glad that you are able to join us this evening. There are many that are watching tonight on live stream. Unfortunately, I don't know how many because I don't get to actually see that as I'm dealing with the news part here. But anyway, uh, God bless you, those of you that have joined us this evening. And uh, I, I, we have a very serious uh, news broadcast this evening. I know there's all types of events that are happening globally everywhere. And, uh, you know, just to kind of give you some idea, uh, we have a lot of things that are happening in Israel. We have things that are happening uh, in, in the Middle East period. Uh, ban Ki-moon admits the UN and anti-Israel is uh, the bias. Uh, another very serious breaking story that's going on. Um, and, of course, the Antifada still continues in Israel. Uh, these are some of the main things that are happening uh, in, in Israel. Uh, another thing that we'll be talking about tonight is right here, as you see here, RT is reporting about the Turkish MP faces treason charges after telling RT ISIS use Turkey for tra uh, tra excuse me, trans transiting uh, the sarin gas for ISIS. And I had actually not made the story public as of yet. I've been following this, and I was watching his live interview uh, on RT News the other day. He's a journalist, and it was really concerning for me because I knew that this was coming, and I knew that the Turkish government uh, is really on a lynch uh, case here. And, uh, and, or excuse me, he's a scientist, actually, uh, and uh, I knew that it was only a matter of time that they were going to do something to this poor man here as well. And um, that was just very concerning to me. Pardon me there. I, I see that. I want to make sure you guys can see everything. It looked like the camera was not just right there. Uh, but anyway, uh, moving on, though, in our top story headlines, which is a prophetic uh, broadcast, this is what is the most concerning to me is a headline that was shared with me, and I wished I could remember the brother or sister that shared this with me in an email a few days ago. Um, the moment I got it, I knew uh, that this was a prophecy in the making. And, uh, but I'm, I, I must say that even in the title that we did on live stream here, uh, if I remember right, the title of this uh, particular message was uh, Putin, or, or could God be using uh, President Putin to bring global judgment? And, uh, and I'll explain myself when we begin to look at the scriptural aspect of this, but I just want to look real quick at the article. The title from Independent News is Vladimir Putin Signs a Law Allowing Russia to Ignore International Human Rights Rulings. And I know the prophecy we're going to be speaking about is in Isaiah chapter 13, so if you do have a Bible and want to follow along with us, you may find this very enlightening. Uh, I have researched this in depth. I've looked at this through the Hebrew language. I've looked at this even from the... Uh, which the Hebrew that we have today is from the Masoretic uh, text. I have looked at this from the, uh, the Zedekite uh, Hebraic translation as well, from the Dead Sea Scrolls. Uh, the, the whole passage from, from Isaiah 13 is very alarming. Uh, there is more in there than probably meets the eye. And uh, I am wondering if this man right here may end up being an instrument by God himself. Now, I, now I have actually reported... Uh, here in the past, that I believe that he may be uh, Putin, excuse me, uh, that he may be Pope Francis' new warlord uh, as I begin to see the things that are going on in the Middle East. But now that I see the U.S. stepping back up and NATO and really confronting Russia, I'm kind of taking a step back and maybe even have to relook at that. And my question now is, now it doesn't make him a godly man in what he's doing. I don't say that. I know that Putin believes to be a uh, Russian Orthodox, he's a Russian Orthodox uh, Catholic uh, man. That's his faith. Uh, he's very open about his faith. Uh, he at least has more audacity than the American politicians. He'll at least say the name Jesus Christ in public. But my question is, has God raised this man up to help uh, initially bring about judgment? on the world here in the end times here. So let's look at the article first off. Vladimir Putin signs a law allowing Russia to ignore international human rights ruling. Uh, the, the article says uh, he has signed a law allowing the Constitutional Court of Russia to decide whether or not to comply with judgments made by international human rights court. And uh, just so you guys can see this a little bit better there, we bring it up a little bit bigger on the screen here for you. The law published, we're in the second paragraph, the law published by governments on Tuesday enables Russia's high court to overthrow decisions made by Strasbourg-based European Court of Human Rights, the ECHR. 
The bill was officially adopted by Russia's parliament last Wednesday, now signed by President Putin, Mr. Putin, they say. The bill permits the court to review rulings of the international human rights bodies and pronounce them non-executable -ex uh, if the court deems they, uh, deems they, divert, they, they contradicted Russian constitution. Uh, the bill was drafted in response to a decision of the Constitutional Court in July stating judgments on the ECHR would not be implemented if they contradict Russia's constitution. The de decision also stated that the Russian constitution would take priority over international law. Uh, you can read more about this. We will actually post this uh, in the uh, description here as well as this will be posted on our Facebook page where you can follow along there. Uh, so you guys are able to actually follow along with us here uh, on the, uh, the Bible there. We will be going to the Mamre Bible Hebrew English version there. Uh, that is uh, at, as you can see on the screen, uh, uh, mechon, M-E-C-H-O-N hyphen M-A-M-R-E dot org. Uh, I use the Hebrew English version myself, which I'm already always in anyway there. And... Uh, We'll go right up here on the screen here. Let's get to the book of Isaiah, which we are in, in chapter 13 there. Um, I've got also the King James Version opened up right here because we're going to start at the very beginning here uh, for, for just for some of the things here that we may refer to here. It says here in verse 1, the burden of Babylon, which Isaiah the son of Amos did see. Now the, the word bur uh, burden here uh, in the Hebraic language is actually a prophecy uh, is, is what it really means uh, in Hebrew. So it's the prophecy of Babylon uh, that, uh, that Isaiah actually saw. He says, Set up uh, a, an ensign upon the high mountain, lift up the voice unto them, wave the hand that they may go into the gates of the nobles. Okay, I have commanded, now this is what's interesting, I have commanded, verse 3, my consecrated ones. Now in Hebrew, if you follow that along right there, in iti, all right, I have commanded, limi kadoshi. That's literally my holy ones. So see, you've actually got another prophecy right here speaking about your holy, your, the two witnesses. Uh, it's kind of interesting in the Cuman Gospel, Jesus actually refers to them as. Uh, the, 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 the ones that would restore the holy way, and I believe he does call them as well the holy ones. They will come and restore the holy way. In Revelation, John refers to them as the two witnesses. Obadiah refers to them as deliverers. The very last verse of, of uh, Obadiah says that deliverers will stand up on Mount Zion. And so therefore, uh, we see that also in Zechariah, many passages speaking about the two witnesses. Now, notice how he words this. So, I have commanded my consecrated ones, or my holy ones, yea, I have called my mighty ones for mine anger, even my proudly exalting ones. In the King James, they actually worded verse 3 in that part there. I have also called my mighty ones for mine anger, even them that rejoice in my highness. Okay, so uh, we move on in here. It appears to me that we're dealing with two different entities here. The two witnesses are coming. They have been commanded, the holy ones. But then he says, yea, I have called my mighty ones. Uh, now, could that still be alluding to the two witnesses? I can't say for sure. I've looked at this pretty depth and in detail, but as we go down, it does appear that we're looking at two different groups here. Let's move on. Hark a tumult. Mountains like as of great people. Hark the uproar of the kingdoms of the nations gathered together. The Lord of hosts mustereth the host of the battle. They come from a far country, from the end of heaven, even the Lord and the weapons of his indignation to destroy the whole earth. That's an interesting thought right there. And this is one reason why I say, could Putin play a part in this? I'm not for certain as of yet. I have really been, been praying about this, battling over this. Is this a heavenly host that's coming? Or is this God allowing uh, Russia to take part in the judgments upon the nations? Now, someone sent me the other day as well a very interesting 
a vision of a 90-year-old lady from 1968. Uh, she was, a, I believe, from uh, Norway. And in her prophecy, she sees the ends of days. And one of the main things that she saw before the coming of Yeshua was that there would be a huge mass of people that would come up from the south that would migrate into Europe and into Scandinavia. And the people would not be welcome there, and especially when they came in such a large multitude. And finally, she says that what would happen, would they, would, they would be turned on by the people. And they would be treated just like the Jews were before the Second World War. She said then, the iniquity would be full. And that's something that really touched my heart when she said that. Because she's talking about the Arabic people that have come up from Syria and the war-torn regions there, as well as in Africa. Now, we do know there are Muslim terrorists, and we do know that the governments that have created this ISIS to begin with have infiltrated and put ISIS terrorists in amongst these people that are moving northward. But it, wasn't it interesting that in her vision, she notes that, yes, that they would actually, that God said that the iniquity of the people would be full once they had rejected these people that came. And the reason why I say that, because I go back and I think over the many years that Christian evangelists have tried at the risk of their own lives. Many have been persecuted and murdered in Muslim nations because of the strict, uh, is dominant law, the Sharia law, the decapitating, the killing of the Christians, everything. And to get the gospel of Jesus Christ into these countries has been very difficult. And what few that have believed they have had to give their own lives for, for, the, for the gospel of Jesus Christ as well. And now suddenly, because of the war that is going on in the Middle East, there is a huge mass, mass migration of the Arabic people fulfilling, in fact, Micah chapter 7, verse 13, that they would cause the land to become desolate by their own doings. But these people are actually migrating through Europe as well as in the United States now, and even in Canada is receiving 23,000 by the year's end. But there's one thing we are missing, and that is the door is open now. Now they're no longer in their homeland where laws prevent you from being able to take the time to witness if God opens that door to you. Maybe there are some souls that could be saved. Maybe we shouldn't look at them in such a negative light. We do know that God has the law here to deal with those evildoers that are willing to rape, pillage, and murder and everything else. That is going to be an issue as well. That's going to come with it. But we don't want to judge every one of them according to that as well. And, and the, the sister's vision really spoke to my heart. 90 years old in 1968, she told the man that she told the vision to, she says, I will not see the coming of the Third World War. But one thing she did say, is where the world, where the where the nuclear bomb, she said they would use atom bombs, is what she called it. And she said that where it would be used at would be the United States, Australia, also the wealthy nations of the world. Japan, she said as well, would be nuked as well. And the rich nations of the world. I've wondered if that doesn't even include New Zealand as well as uh, Great Britain, possibly, even Germany. So what's interesting, though, she never mentions Russia. And she said many people, because it will desolate these countries so bad that you can't even plow the lands, and those that survive the nuclear attack will be fleeing to the poor countries in the South, like South America, Africa, places like that. She said, but they will be treated just as evilly as we have treated them all these years. And I know many people that have gone to South America. And my exact words to my own wife before I ever heard this prophecy was the same thing. I said, the people that go to South America, they may think that they're somebody now because they've got money. I said, but when everything fails, I said, people better think twice about how they treat those people down there. I said, you should always show love and kindness to everyone no matter where you are. Because we never know what's going to happen. Anyway, let's go back to this prophecies right here because my concern is, is this going to be re regarding Russia being involved in this? Uh, verse 6, How ye, for the day of the Lord is at hand, as the destruction from the Almighty shall it come. Verse 7, There shall all hands be slack, and every heart of man shall melt. 
verse 8, and they shall be affrighted, pains and, and, and throes shall take hold of them. They shall be in pain as a woman in travail. They shall look aghast one at another. Their faces shall be faces of flame. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, cruel and full of wrath and fierce anger, to make the earth a desolation and to destroy the sinners thereof out, out of it. For the stars of heaven, the constellations thereof, shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened in his going forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. One thing also in this little sister's prophecy when she gave it there that I thought was very interesting was that she noted how that when this all would take place, that one of the main things that would happen was that, that it would cover like, like, a, like a huge cloud of darkness would come over the earth from all the explosions. She said that you won't even be able to take in a breath of air. It'll be so thick. So could that be a possibility of the prophecy there? Now, I do keep in mind, and, and understand me, friends, again, I'm only bringing this to you in this particular news broadcast of what happened in, in, in Putin's case there, and you'll see why in a few minutes on some of the verses I'm going to share with you. I can't say that God is going to use Russia in this case. Uh, we know that God can judge this world any way He chooses to do so. A lot of times, God only prophesies it, and man brings about his own destruction. That's plain and simple. We've seen that all along. Man destroys himself. And, uh, and in the case of God, every time he ever brought judgment against Israel, when he prophesied it, what was it? It was always another nation that came into the destruction. Babylonians came down uh, during, during the time of Israel. Uh, the prophecies that were going on during, during those times there, that they would be, uh, Jeremiah prophesied that they would go into to, to Babylon. For 70 years, they would remain there. See, we see that God does things a certain way. Even the destruction of the second temple. What happens? The Romans come in. Uh, along with the Syrian army, and they send them into exile. And in fact, that's one of the reasons why, and I say this to the Arabic people that might be listening, this is the reason why you see Syria going into captivity today like the Jews did during the Holocaust. It's because the Syrian army, along with the Romans during that day, caused the Jews to go into exile back 2,000 years ago because they were the soldiers that the Romans were using and you caused them to go into exile. And now the same thing is happening to Syria. They're going into exile as well. Why? Because of ISIS fulfilling Micah chapter 7 verse 13. And I'll take you quickly to that. Just for those of you that may not be aware of that particular verse there, let me just quickly run you over to that. All right, and that uh, says, Notwithstanding, the land shall be desolate because of them that dwell therein, for the fruit of their doings. And he's talking about Syria. And he doesn't, and by the way, it's Assyria, is where it says in verse 12, In that day also he shall come even to thee from Assyria, and from the fortified cities, and from the fortress even to the river, and from the sea and the sea, and from the mountains to mountains. Notwithstanding, the land shall be desolate because of them that dwell therein, for the fruit of their own doing. You understand? That encompasses a huge area. That's why you see even the refugees from all the way over into Iraq, Mosul, right there around Nineveh. We're going to get into that one later too. I just won't be able to do it in this broadcast here. All right, verse 11, And I will visit upon the world their evil, upon the wicked their iniquity, and I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease. I, and will lay low the haughtiness of the tyrants. Verse 12 and 13, I will make man more rare than fine gold, even man that, than the pure gold of Ophir. More rare. In other words, there won't be many men left. Therefore will I make the heavens to tremble, and the earth shall be shaken out of her place for the wrath of the Lord of hosts in the day of His fierce anger. Verse 14 and 15, And it shall come to pass that as they chase the gazelle, as the sheep that no man gathereth, they shall turn every man to his own people and shall flee every man to his own land. Every one that is found shall be thrust through. Every one that is caught shall fall by the sword. Their babes also shall be dashed in pieces before their eyes. Their houses shall be spoiled and their wives ravished. You know, it's kind of interesting right here because we're talking about Babylon. Mystery Babylon, to be more specific, because we look at Revelation, it speaks about Mystery Babylon. Now, my wife had a very interesting revelation when she saw this about the babies being dashed in pieces against the stones. I think it's the way it's in King James there, verse 16. Um, and I'll just take you to that one to be sure. 
Their children also should be dashed to pieces before their eyes. Oh, it doesn't say it against the stones or anything. The daughters of Babylon are the children. See, it's not speaking of little tiny babies per se, and yet it could be. I don't want to say it's not. But there again, even with that, and their wives ravished. This is why I have looked very seriously because it can't, that cannot be an army from heaven itself. You understand? God doesn't, angels don't come down here and rape people and, and it's, not, it's not a heavenly army. But, let me take you real quick. What did, what did they say about Putin? Vladimir Putin signs a law allowing Russians to ignore international human rights rulings. Now, I don't say, and let me just say this, I'm not saying that President Putin would authorize such cruelties to be done in the first place. I don't believe he would. I, I have watched the way this man has worked over the last several years since I've been covering news there, and he seems to have been far more honest than, than Barack Obama by far. Now, I don't say he doesn't have faults, and I'm not Russian, and I don't don't want to live under any communistic rule either. I know there's just as evil on both sides as is on the other. But it doesn't mean that the men that fight wars won't end up stooping so low to do that because we have that also in the American military. I've known many cases, especially from Vietnam. I've known men that have, that have suffered mentally when trying to come to Christ because of the past of the evils and the wicked that they did during war. And it was no different in Iraq or World War II or any other time. I do believe that American military has tried to live a higher standard, but still, there's still wicked men that fight battles. And when a man is willing to kill someone else, that's, it takes a pretty heavy spirit to do that. Let's go on now. Verse 17, Behold, I will stir up the Medes against them who shall, not be, who shall not regard silver, and as for gold, they shall not delight in it. That was another thing that made me think of Vladimir Putin. Why do we say this? You see, the one that cares about the gold and the silver is Rome. That's the Vatican. They care about all the gold and silver. Believe me, that matters to the Pope of Rome. He wants your money, wants your dollars. He'll take your land, kill your children, and burn everybody to the stake to make sure that he gets the dollars in order to make his billions and trillions. Remember, the Vatican owns a great deal of shares in Gulf oil, excuse me, Shell, and, and uh, Shell Oil International, and there's one other one, I think it's Chevron. All you have to do, go around Europe, for example. You know how Shell was always a popular gas station in America? It's major in Europe as well. And guess who's the one down there in Ethiopia where all the Ethiopians are being killed again, just like it was back during World War II when Pope Pius XII turned the other, turned the other cheek while the Ethiopians were murdered by the Italians. Over a million were murdered and gassed to death. Interesting, isn't it? And who's the one that has the oil rights down there in Ethiopia? It's Shell Oil International. Of course, the Vatican owns millions and millions in stocks in Shell Oil International. Anyway, going on. Verse 17, Behold, I will stir up the Medes against them who shall not regard silver, and as for gold, they shall not delight in it. And one other thought on that, my wife said there's one thing about Russia when it comes to fighting, because you have to remember she grew up under a communistic regime. She's from Slovakia. She lived there and she saw when she was a teenager in high school when they were liberated from the Soviet oppression. It was a shock to her. She said, but there's one thing about the Russian people. They live in poverty. And even though they may have a little bit better way of life in these days here, they're very accustomed to have to live in hardship. And when they're being pushed, the way Russia is being pushed by the United States and by NATO and their allies. They will band together, she said, like no other people could ever on the earth will band together. They become a very loyal people to their country. And she said they will suffer poverty to stick together and fight. 
verse 18 and 19. And their bows shall dash the young men in pieces, and they shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb. Their eyes shall not spare children. In Babylon, the glory of the kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldeans' pride, shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. Esau, Rome, you're going to be judged. You wonder who's going to destroy the Vatican? It's not going to be ISIS. Russia is going to destroy the Vatican. And one thing that's interesting too, we know that what does this Bible say about the two witnesses? They will bring judgment on Mount Esau. And we see that they're commanded in the very beginning here. So not only is there a war going on, you got the two witnesses bringing about all kind of natural disasters as well. No wonder why Obama made the very clear statement at the uh, in France recently and likened climate change to terrorism. And when he was questioning the United States, you know, Donald Trump thought it was the most absurd statement he ever heard. No, it wasn't the most absurd statement. It really wasn't, Mr. Trump. You may not realize just how smart that man is. He's been working with the Pope, sitting in private meetings. According to Psalm 83, it says, they have consulted against thy hidden ones. There's your two witnesses again. Why do they consult against them? They know that when they come, there's going to be drastic climate change. And they're looking for ways to imprison them. They're looking for ways to, be, to deal with these two witnesses when they do come. Why do you think Obama said in the interview, he said, you know, there's, and he likened it to terrorism when he said this in the interview. He said, what do we have if suddenly, not over time, suddenly the ocean rises five, six, seven, ten feet how would the ocean all of a sudden rise all of a sudden like that? That would be kind of weird, wouldn't it? He said, what do we, what do, we do if suddenly the, 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 the food belts of the, of the world can no longer produce food? Now, he's talking about biblical prophecies when he says these things. They know it's coming. They want to make the Pope look like a great prophet as well, prophesying that it's coming. They've got their own prophet already. I'm sure he's messianic. Very interesting, isn't it? In Babylon, the glory of the kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldeans' pride shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. It'd be nothing but ashes. And it shall never be inhabited, neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation. Neither shall the Arabian pitch tent there. Neither shall the shepherd make their fold there. Now, some people might say, well, the Arabian, that's an Arab. It must be the Arabic nation. It must be down there in, in, in Iran or something or Persia. This is where Babylon was originally. You know why he calls it the Arabian? Because Esau married in amongst the Arabic people. He married in amongst the Egyptians. Why do you think he calls it Sodom and Egypt when he talks about where the two witnesses are killed? In Sodom and Egypt, spiritually called, where also our Lord was crucified, which is actually in Israel. But after being raised, Hadad being raised in the royal palace there in Egypt by Pharaoh as his own son, when he was, when he was hidden because David had killed all of the last of Esau's men there after Saul had waged war, and then David finished the battle. But one child escaped, and that was Hadad. And Hadad was raised by the Pharaoh of Egypt. When he became of age, he asked to go home. Well, you would think Edom was home, but he didn't go to Edom. Where did he go? He went to Syria, and he became the Syria. His son Ben-Hadad, also a king, and then later migrated in Obadiah, and one other prophecy as well, puts him in Italy as the king of Italy. Obadiah, Daniel, and one other all make Rome your modern-day Arabic nation because they intermingled amongst the Arabic people. Verse 21, But wildcats shall lie there, and their houses shall be full of ferrets, and ostriches shall dwell there, and satyrs and shall dance there, and jackals shall howl in their castles, and wild dogs in the pleasant palaces, and her time is near to come, and her days shall not be prolonged. When her days are not prolonged, let me take you back to verse 1, or verse 2. My apology, verse 3. You know how you know the number of the days? I have commanded my holy ones, my consecrated ones. When the two witnesses come on the scene, we already know according to Revelation chapter 11, 
three and a half years, and it's all over. I don't know, know if Rome will make it that long, but three and a half years, it'll all be over. According to what we see in the scripture, though, when all the earth rejoices, that's when she's destroyed. So it looks like that Russia will flatten the Vatican right after the two witnesses are laying dead in the street. I'm Stephen Benoon. You've been watching Israeli News Live. Again, we may see prophecy about to unfold. The coming of the two witnesses, friends, are at the door. They are here. I get a lot of emails. People tell me they're already here. They already know who they are. Some say that Elijah's already come. There's so many different groups that claim that Elijah's already come and restored the Word of God. They will restore the holy way. And another thing too, according to Malachi 4, it says, Behold, the days come that will burn as an oven that shall leave man neither root nor branch. Just paraphrasing that. This is when Elijah comes. And after his testimony, the earth will be burned with fire. We're not talking about men that have died, that were dead maybe 20 years ago, 10 years ago, 50 years ago, 100 years ago in some cases. Joseph Smith William Branham, there's been others that claim to be the Elijah. Or if it wasn't that they claimed it, their people that follow them claim it. Friends, I appreciate whatever these different men of God have done. And I don't speak anything against them in that regard there, but I'm telling you the restoration of the Word of God will not come like that. When it comes, and in fact, when you look at the Qumran calendar, it was a 364-day calendar. When you look at Enoch's prophecy, and you look at the different prophecies about the judgment when God pours His wrath out on the earth, and then look at what happens in Revelation with the two witnesses, there's exactly enough time for God to pour His wrath out right after that, right after they raise up. Then God will hide His bride while this earth goes through the most terrible, tremendous turmoil that you could have ever imagined. It's time, friends, to get our houses in order. This is why, too, you see the Bible says that they will take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew and say, Ten people of the nation, we hear that God is with you. Show us your way. You know what causes the Gentiles to do this, friends? And why would the Gentiles, why would the Christian need to go to the Jews? The Jews do not have Christ, do they? You would think it's the other way around. Well, the problem is, is even the Jews don't have it together either. And nothing against my Jewish brethren. They're trying. They're trying hard as well. No different than the Christian is trying hard. The Christian recognizes Yeshua to be the Messiah. The Jews don't recognize that. But why would they take hold of the skirt of a Jew, of him that is a Jew? Because the two witnesses have come to him. What causes them to go to the Jews is because they will see the Jews in revival. They will see a remnant of Israel believe when the two witnesses come, and when they see them in revival, they will find out that a restoration of the word has come that's a little different than what they got from Rome 2,000 years ago, thanks to Constantine. And that's what they will want to know about. They will want to know about the commandments of God and how to really keep them. They will want to know about those feast days and how to really keep them. And the Jews do pretty good at keeping the feast days, but there are a few things that still need to be corrected there. And for the Jews, they need to recognize their Messiah. And they will be elated. I'm Stephen Benoon. You've been watching Israeli News Live. Shalom. Thank you for watching. Thank you for those of you who joined on live stream. I trust everybody had your sound today. Uh, we don't have any problem with sound. I can't see what the comments would be at this point here. Uh, if there's any trouble there, you can catch it on live, uh, excuse me, on YouTube. We'll be uploading this here within the hour, as well as IsraeliNewsLive.org. You can go there. We will be doing podcasts there, and we're also going to be uh, airing on Lamb Radio as well. That is coming out as well. They're going to be carrying our news broadcast there uh, seven days a week. So we trust that uh, it's a blessing to you. And if it, this message is a blessing to you, stand with us. This time of year is a little bit tougher we know because so many people that celebrate different holidays this time of the year Jews for Hanukkah many Christians celebrate Christmas some don't some do I don't get into those debates there I have my own thoughts on these things but anyway remember this ministry if you would israelinewslive.org you can give there online you can go to israelreturns.com that's right here right after I 
close my own mouth here, you'll be able to see those websites again and our addresses on there as well. And we have gotten several uh, letters here recently from different people like Sister Angela there out of uh, Logan, Utah that has just written us there. I haven't had a chance to write the people back also. Uh, Sister Marilyn there from uh, Niagara Falls. Oh, my wife loves that, Sister. God bless you there. And, uh, and I don't have everything here with me. I just want to say some first names here. Brother Harold there uh, and his family there from uh, Decorah. Uh, I don't know what, I guess I, A is Idaho there. And Brother Robert there from uh, Milla in Berkeley. Uh, excuse me, I'm sorry. Brother Robert from Berkeley, Illinois. God bless you. We thank you for taking the time to be a support to this ministry. Shalom. Shalom.